Are you mentally young? As we age, everyone loses some brain function. It's a terrifying reality. Could you pass such simple tests? Let's find out on The Younger You. I'm on top of the world, now I'm living. And the good just gets better, keeps on giving. Not even close to the end, it's just beginning. Life is getting lighter while the days are getting brighter, yeah. And then to good, I won't even worry anymore. To call my care, still can kick them all out the door. Go on a try, come and tell me what you're waiting for. Move and keep them going till your life is overflowing, yeah. Welcome to The Younger You. Today we're talking about your brain. That's right, you've heard me correctly. We're going to be hearing about what makes a brain healthy, how to test your brain's wellness, and what you can do to help that brain of yours. Let's go meet up with Dr. Joshua Redd to learn all about healthy versus unhealthy brains. Thanks, Troy. I'm here at the University of Utah to not only talk about brain health, but also show you the difference between what a healthy brain looks like and an unhealthy brain. Every person faces neurodegeneration or dementia. That means as we age, our brain stops functioning as well as it should. This even causes a noticeable shrink in size of the brain. Today, Dr. Stensis, a professor of neurobiology and anatomy here at the University of Utah, has provided us with an opportunity to observe actual human brains. Let's go take a look. The following footage shows actual human brains. It may be too graphic for some viewers. All right, Dr. Stensis, tell me what we have in front of us right now. Well, we have a tray of brains. <laughs> And you'll notice that they're really, really hard. Feel that. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of like a rubber ball, mm -hmm. but they really aren't like that when you're alive. Okay. They're very, very soft, about like green jello. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's what pretty soft. What causes it to uh, harden after they die? Okay, so in these buckets over here, we have formaldehyde, and formaldehyde causes the protein to get hard so that it doesn't decompose, but it's really dangerous to think about the brain like a rubber ball, see? Yeah. Like that? Yeah, yeah. You don't want to think of it that way because then you start to be careless. If you thought about green jello sitting inside this skull, okay, I'm gonna bang into the <laughs> windshield, okay? Yeah, yeah. And your brain goes up against here and then it bounces back here. What does it rub over? It rubs over these rough ridges and those ridges are on the underside of the brain and so you'll see what we call contusions of the temporal lobe here and the frontal lobe. So you can yeah. do irreversible damage with trauma just by the brain sliding forward and backward. Yeah. Let's talk a little bit about these different lobes and what yeah, they do. Yeah, let's see the, the different lobes and the different functions and the purpose that they have. We have the gyri and we have the sulci, which cover the cortex of the brain. Okay. And then there is a big sulcus that runs more or less here. And everything in front of that is called frontal lobe and is mostly motor and judgment and executive function. Yeah. The stretch behind it, kind of here, is sensory information coming up from your body, pain, temperature, where your joints are in space. This is the occipital lobe. So this is visual cortex where you interpret what comes in from your eye. Yeah, we have the temporal lobe. And the temporal lobe we associate with audition or hearing. There's some cortex in here. Mm -hmm. And we associate it with new memories that are formed down here around the, the hippocampus. Yeah. And then here, attached to this brain, we still have the spinal cord. And the spinal cord then at its end has spinal nerves that go out to the muscles. Yeah. And to the both striated muscles, voluntary muscles, like I move my thumb or kick my leg. And to smooth muscle, like in my gut, in my heart, around my uh, trachea, uh, around the bronchi, okay. in my lungs, and things like that. Let's look how the brain is affected by somebody that has a stroke. Okay, there are different kinds of strokes. This is a hemorrhagic one, because there's a hemorrhage, there's a blood clot. The important thing about stroke is the biggest cause of stroke is hypertension. Everybody has to get checked for hypertension. And obviously, dietary and lifestyle is going to be crucial for these patients. Absolutely. The two most important things are diet and exercise. Yeah. Exercise increases blood flow to the brain. Blood flow to the brain is a healthier brain. What happens when a patient has a stroke? Can you describe well, that to us real yeah. fast? Now, they aren't all like this. Some of them, you wouldn't see a blood clot. What happens is a blood vessel gets plugged up. That's okay. called an ischemic stroke as opposed to a hemorrhagic stroke. Okay. In an ischemic stroke, if you catch them within three hours, they can bring them and radiologically inject something called TPA, which can dissolve, in many cases, the blood clot. So it's crucial we know the signs of a stroke. Do you know what some of those signs are? Well, some of those signs are slurred 
slurred speech. You can also ask them to smile, and if one side of the face is asymmetrical uh, or they can't blink, uh, those are signs. Stick out their tongue. Can they understand commands? There's a whole uh, series of very simple things that any lay person at home can ask their spouse or their friend. Can you show us the difference between a healthy brain and a brain of somebody who is suffering with, with dementia? Okay. This is a relatively healthy brain of an older person. So if I had a 30-year-old, the spaces here between the, the gyri wouldn't be as great. But if you compare that, and then you look at the width of the gyri here and the depth, you can see that there's been loss in the frontal lobe. Dementia can be due to lots of things that cause a loss of neurons and a yeah. loss of your cognitive ability. So it can be uh, things like vitamin B deficiency. Yep. It could be swings in glucose. It could be thyroid. And it could be just lack of cerebral blood flow. Yep. For example, uh, people with sleep apnea, they're starting to see cognitive decline in people that don't get enough blood to their brain during the night. Yeah, which is, which is huge. What are some symptoms that a patient might have if they truly have early onset dementia? They'll be forgetful. They'll wander off and not know how to get home. Okay. D d loss of interest. De depression often goes with it. So it's yeah, really hard yeah. to separate those out. And so depression is much easier to treat than yeah. dementia. Yeah. So what you, what you want to do is rule out these other things. And then it's said that retired people should all go out and learn to do something new. If you've never been an artist, take a pottery making, play golf, learn a new skill. Doing new things causes a certain amount of sprouting. In other words, Branches of neurons can make yeah. more connections or can lose connections. So you want to try to do new activities. So we're looking at a brain now of a subdural hematoma. And this is what happens when someone hits their head too hard. Th right? This was fatal, okay? So this, this is a dura that's supposed to protect the brain, but didn't in this case. And this is a big blood clot. Wow. This could be due to a bicycle accident, a, a, a car accident, falling, and it makes the important point that we want to protect the brain. Yeah, make now, sure this, we're wearing helmets yeah, at all times. And we're... seat belts. Yep. There is evidence that these concussions can continuously shear axons, loss of neurons, and loss of cognitive wow. ability. Think of boxing. Yeah. You know, Muhammad Ali, mm -hmm. and he lost a lot of nerve cells and became demented. Perfect. In fact, what we have here is we have goggles that we can put on that will mimic signs of concussion. So repetitive in injuries from the brain, like we're playing football or whatnot, which yeah. I have many, yeah. uh, we can go out and try these goggles on and see what the symptoms are with the concussion. So already I'm seeing double of basically everything. Uh, things seem kind of dim here. I'm gonna try to walk in a, in a straight line. I'm, I'm kind of dizzy just standing here already as it is. I'm sure it's gonna be <laughs> harder to, to do this. Wow, that is, that's crazy the differences that you see with these. We also have drunk goggles that make you have the same symptoms as if you were drunk. This is a lot worse than the concussion goggles, I do have to say, because I can't even see my perceptions like completely off as far as like where the ground is. Holy smoke. My left foot is like clear. <laughs> I'm definitely drunk. I can, I can feel everything's displaced. Everything's a lot different. All righty. I'm right here now. Okay, coming up after the break, I'll be heading out to test the public and see how healthy their brains are. Luckily, I'll take these off when I drive. Like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter for updates on the show and join the Younger You conversation. Before the break, we learned the differences between a healthy brain and an unhealthy one. Now Dr. Red is going to test out the public on how well their brains function. Hey Julie, how old are you? I'm 43. Okay, so here's what's going to happen. We're going to do the finger to nose test. Have you ever heard of that before? Yes. You've probably seen it, right? Yes. We're going to be checking for lots of different things as far as brain function is concerned. So what I want you to do is have your feet close together, just like so, and then I have, want your arms straight out. And what I'd like you to do is close your eyes, and now I want you to try to touch your nose with the left finger. <laughs> okay, go ahead with the right finger. Let's see the left one. Good, let's do the right one. Oh, a little miss there. That's all right, that's all right. How old are you? I'm 23. Okay, here's what's gonna happen. We're gonna be doing the finger to nose test. Have you heard of that? Uh, well, 
touch my nose, <laughs> walk straight. It's pretty simple, right? Okay, now do it with your right. Now let's do it with your left. Pretty good there. Do it with your right. Alicia, how's it going? Good, how are you? Good. What's your age? 37. 37, okay. So, legs straight, <clears throat> arms out to your side, perfect. Touch your left finger to your nose. Good. Now do your right finger. Now close your eyes. Let's make it a little bit more difficult. Let's do a couple more. Keep your eyes closed. No cheating. <laughs> Not too bad there. Okay. Uh, do you know what that's for? Uh, coordination. Coordination. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Uh, the cerebellum is, is huge, and hugely involved in coordination, and so that's what we're checking for. Is any type of impairment for the cerebellum. Brenda, how are you today? Good, thank you. Good, how old are you? I am 53 years old. 53? You look like you're 40. Oh, well, thank Good you. Good gen genes there. Okay, arms straight out, and I would like you to touch your left finger to your nose. Okay, now do the right one. Good, now I want you to close your eyes. <laughs> now do the right one. <laughs> okay, how old are you? I am 70. 70? Okay, let's touch your left finger to your nose. My left. Is that this one? Yep, you got it. <laughs> okay, now do your right. Okay. A little miss there, that's okay though. Now, okay. here's something that's important. As we age, we lose neurons. So all of us lose neurons. So the, this test for me is gonna be a lot harder when I'm 60, and when, especially when I'm 70. So you're doing great, okay? Good. Now let's do the right one. A little bit there. Let's go ahead and do the left one. Now, what happens here is if we end up missing our nose, we're looking for a parietal uh, problem with the brain, okay? We have something called the parietal cortex. Mm -hmm. And whenever we miss our nose, that suggests that we might have some impairment on the parietal side, of the opposite side. So if we do the right side we've missed, we might have some impairment on the left side. But you did pretty good most of the time, so I think you passed. Good. The tests I'm showing today are used to detect dysfunction in your cerebellum. The cerebellum is located at the back of the brain. It controls coordination, motor skills, balance, and posture. The cerebellum is important for making adjustments in order to maintain balance. It also communicates between all of your muscle groups to coordinate the timing of your movements. A few things that can damage the connection between the cerebellum and your muscles include head trauma, stroke, inflammatory diseases, and something as simple as a gluten intolerance. This next test, what we're gonna do is called a tandem Romberg's test, okay? Okay. This is what happens. We'll be looking for a cerebellum dysfunction, but I want you to have your hands down to your side like so, and I want you to put your right foot right in front of your left foot. Okay. Okay? Perfect. Now, let's look straight ahead. <laughs> oh, because we haven't got the hard part yet. I'm gonna have you okay. close your eyes and we'll get to the hard part. Okay. Good. Now, if we see any type of swaying, keep your eyes closed. <laughs> Put your right leg in front of your left, heel to toe fashion. Okay. Now I want you to close your eyes. Okay? Yeah. And if we see any type of swaying one side to the other, we're, we're gonna basically be having impairment to that side of the cerebellum. And you're doing pretty good there. Thank you. You're gonna check for balance and coordination and things like that there too. Okay. Now I want you to, yeah, already having some problems. Okay, yeah. I want you to close your eyes and then try to balance. It's hard. Keep going, you're doing good. Oh. That left leg just wants to go. <laughs> Put your right foot in front of your left in a heel to toe fashion, and I want you to close your eyes. Ooh. <laughs> Keep them closed. That's hard. Interesting, yeah. It is. What's going on with you there? I don't know. <laughs> Which side are we swaying to? Mostly the left side. Left side, right? Yeah. Okay, when we sway to the left side, we're looking for impairment to the left side of the cerebellum. It's okay. the same side. Right foot in front of your left foot. Uh-oh. Okay? Okay. And now I want you to close your eyes. And keep them closed. <laughs> Good? Okay. Let's do one more. No, all right. I got you, I won't let you fall. Okay? Okay. <laughs> I cannot do that. That's all right. So like if we see any type of swain, for you it's probably which side? You'd say this right side, right? Probably the left. Okay. Which side are you swaying to? The left. It wants to step out and be <laughs> even with the other yeah. foot. Yeah. 
Now, when we have those types of problems, we're looking for cerebellum impairment. And, that, and the cerebellum helps us with coordination, it helps us with balance, helps us with lots of different things too. And so, if we start swaying to the right side consistently, we're gonna look for impairment on that right side of the cerebellum, okay? Let's do one more test to kind of magnify that and see how you do. Okay. We're gonna be doing a tandem gait test. Okay? okay. So it's gonna be just like that, heel to toe, but we're gonna be walking now. Okay. And I want you to close your eyes as well. Okay. Alrighty? All right. Let's see how you do. Yeah. Don't open them, no cheating. Not too bad. A little swaying there, a little jerking. Okay, that's good. Keep your eyes closed. Not doing too bad there, not doing too bad. And I want you to walk 10 steps. Okay. okay? But now I want you to close your eyes while we do that. I'm gonna make it a little bit more difficult for you. Okay, go ahead. Good. Let's try some more. Let's try some more. Now keep your eyes closed and try to do it. Go ahead. No. That's all right. Okay, okay, we're good. Oh. All right, come on back, come on back. So how do you think you did with those tests? Not so good. <laughs> Do you do anything at home as far as crossword puzzles or as far as dietary things that maybe decrease inflammatory issues? Or do you do anything at home that might help with brain function? I do. I like puzzles. You like puzzles? I do. Good. Good. So how'd you feel about that? It's it's like you're drunk or something. <laughs> when we're really off balance, that's called ataxia. Okay. Seventy percent of people with ataxia is caused by one food. Guess what that food is? Sugar. Gluten. Gluten. Yeah. Gluten's bad. Yeah. Another big thing, and probably a superfood that helps decrease inflammation is called turmeric. Have you heard of that? I think I have. It's familiar. Yeah. Uh, you can get turmeric powder and you can put that on chicken and oh, vegetables okay. and all yeah. that stuff. That helps kind of decrease inflammation and, and helps with uh, brain function as well and proper blood flow. One of the biggest things that we want to do to help with brain function and cerebellum function is to get to our target heart rate. So even if we exercise, but we're not getting to our target heart rate, that could be a big problem, okay? So doing intense exercise is huge. Okay. So rather than just walking, try to do some intense exercise. I like to do the you. bicycle. Yeah, oh good, I perfect, so, yeah, so. good. Okay, so, thank you. Great, thank All right. you. we'll see ya. Coming up after the break, Dr. Red will be joining myself in the studio to talk about what you need to be doing to keep that brain of yours in tip-top shape. Be sure to check out the Younger You website to watch full episodes of the show. Stay up to date on the Younger You Challenge and get useful tips and tricks to help you achieve the Younger You. Welcome back. Dr. Red has set up some of these items on this table to find out whether my brain is any good or whether I need to have some serious treatment. Hey, Dr. Red, how are you? Good, how are you doing? Good. good. Now, two things first. Let's talk about bread. Why is that bad for us and our brain? Okay, so here's the biggest problem with this. If we have sensitivities to bread, this yeah. is gonna speed up neurodegeneration more than anything, probably. Seriously? Yep, and the way that we can check for that is called a transglutaminase antibody. What does that mean? Uh, it basically checks for celiacs, it checks for how our immune system responds to gluten when we eat it. Okay. And so, if this is the case, this will cause ataxia. So if you remember the patients uh, and the people in the mall that were kind of lost, losing their yeah, balance okay. and having problems, this will speed up that process and make it worse. This also speeds up neurodegeneration and causes lots of problems. So the research is showing now, if we have this antibody present, this is the worst possible thing you can have. Dr. Red, are you talking about just white bread or all breads in general? Any bread. In, in fact, the, the more wheat that you go, the worse it's going to be because the more gluten it will actually contain. So the wow. biggest problem here is any gluten product if you have this antibody present, you gotta avoid it to play. So, let's just go from bread. We're talking about bread. What about any type of cereals that have the wheat in it? Yep, if, if it's gluten, that will contain gluten, and so you're gonna have to avoid oh, that. Oh, wow. But this is huge. You can test that antibody, see if it's present, and if it is, and you have neurodegenerative symptoms or neurological symptoms like that, avoiding this could help slow the process down. How do I test it? 
Simple blood test. Okay. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Now, second one. I see that sugar there, which I just want to grab hold of. Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> I love sugar. <laughs> sugar. Our diets as Americans are really composed of a ton of sugar. Uh, simple sugars, uh, artificial sweeteners, and then also uh, high fructose corn syrup and, and simple carbohydrates. Well, as high well. fructose corn syrup is in just about everything. I know. Like, I know. seriously, how do you yeah. cut that out? If we can just minimize the amount of sugar that we have, that will decrease insulin resistance. As we constantly are eating sugar over and over again, our cells become intolerant to that to where they're not allowing the proper glucose that it needs because of the insulin resistance. I wanted to ask you, there are so many products out there on the market and I want everyone to be aware of this. When they say natural sweeteners, what's the difference between a natural sweetener and an artificial sweetener? Okay, so an artificial sweetener is where they've actually went in and genetically modified or chemically changed the structure to make it sweet. So it's not even like a real sweetener. When they're saying natural sweeteners, it's from a product that allows your food to be sweet or from a natural product, like okay. a different type of fruit or different okay, type of Okay, I understand that. Nutritional so foods. are you saying cut them out as well? If you have insulin resistance or prediabetes or other problems like that or diabetes in general, yeah. our brain is going to be lacking the proper glucose that it needs. Mm. Okay? And the more sugar that we eat, the more we're going to have that problem. And insulin resistance will create a slew of issues. And so our, if our brain is literally lacking glucose, that will end up causing depression, end up speeding the process up as far as neurogeneration is concerned, wow. end up causing lots of problems. So simply just making sure that you do the proper things as far as eating concerned, making sure that you stabilize your blood sugar levels, avoid things that cause high blood sugar spikes, uh, things like that are huge for the brain. I had no concept that that was actually possible with what you were just explaining. Yeah. If you want to find out other things and what's not good for you in your brain, check out these few things. We know that sugar is bad for your brain, but that doesn't mean you should start reaching for artificial sweeteners. Aspartame is a common sugar substitute used in diet sodas. The chemicals in this substance can actually cause degenerative diseases such as Parkinson and Alzheimer's. Another item that is bad for your brain is saturated fats, which can clog brain vessels. This prevents the flow of blood and nutrients to the brain. Foods high in saturated fats include butter, cheese and other dairy products made from whole milk. Alcohol is another item that can damage your brain. Not only does it have short-term effects, but heavy drinking can also cause long-term damage. Some of the effects of alcohol on the brain are sluggish movements, slurred speech and memory loss. Would you have ever have thought there were so many bad things that you shouldn't be eating or doing to help your brain? Well, we're going to talk about some good things. Dr. Ray, can you at least give us some good news? Yeah, okay. <laughs> so here, here we go, let's talk about this. If we can increase the plasticity of our brain yes. and help this process, it's gonna increase our ability to do anything that we do in life, you know, okay. right? So it's like, it's crucial to be able to do the necessary things to help with brain plasticity. Okay, so what are they? Uh, the, the most important thing right here is uh, exercise. Yeah. So there's two major signs of brain degeneration and, and neurological problems there. Yeah. And those symptoms will be uh, fatigue mm -hmm. and then also depression. Just wait, just keep talking. I'm just trying to get more <laughs> intelligent while you're discussing this with me. It's like the first time you worked out. Yeah, it is. It's good, isn't it? <laughs> but here's, here's something that's important. If we can increase our exercise, yeah. and it has to be high intensity exercise, it only has to be for about three to five minutes. And that will help slow brain degeneration down. It also helps with increased Brain plasticity helps with the way our brain functions. It's huge. Okay. But not everyone wants to exercise. What about if you just want to eat? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I noticed let's, there's a little bit of food here. Let's talk about that. So <laughs> one is uh, we have what's called turmeric. Yeah. Uh, turmeric is one of the most anti-inflammatory agents out there. Really? It's, it's, uh, it's awesome. So a lot of our problem is that we eat really stinky diets that cause a lot of stress in the mm. body, creates inflammatory cytokines that increase. Yep. That causes our brain to increase and then our brain literally starts to degenerate and okay. that causes problems. So if we can use uh, different turmeric nutritional supplements or just even use turmeric as in, a food in, additive in our, you know, in our... I was going to say, you can cook with that every day. Yeah. yeah. So which, which we do a lot. We put it on our vegetables, we put it on our, on our chicken or, or okay. turkey. But that will help decrease inflammation throughout the body, which will in turn help decrease brain inflammation, which is I a big concept. I love that. I, I didn't realize that those sorts of spices could actually help in such a way. Yeah. Um, vitamin D. Yeah, vitamin D is crucial. Vitamin D will increase what's called regulatory T cells in the body. This is how our immune system functions. Okay. okay. When, when regulatory T cells are decreased, 
we're going to end up having neurodegeneration increase even more so. Before you go any further, how do we test for our T cells? Uh, you can do it through your blood work and, and all okay, that as well. Okay, so yeah. blood test. Definitely. Another really simple test to do, that can be a, more of an expensive test, but another, another simple test to do is you can check your white blood cell count. Oh. If you start seeing that creep below five, then you're going to be more likely to have immune dysfunction and problems okay. there. A lot of people just eat these like normal lollies because they think of it as a lolly. Can you overdo it? You know, there's, there's certain times that you can, and unfortunately, that's probably not your best source of vitamin D. The best source that we use is a sublingual vitamin D. What's where you that? actually put it underneath your tongue, oh. and you let it absorb right to the bloodstream. One okay. of the biggest problems is that a lot of times if someone has neurological problems, they're going to end up having intestinal problems as well. That's ah. kind of th those two communicate a lot. And so okay. what happens is that if they just take an oral supplement, Yep. and it can absorb into the bloodstream from the intestinal tract, then we're going to have problems there. So we're bypassing the intestinal tract by simply just putting it underneath the okay, tongue. Okay, good. It goes right into the, the bloodstream. We've got these things covered, but if you, if you want to read a good book, what's yeah. the book about? We've been fortunate enough to be a part of this book, and we have lots of different case studies in here. But if you're wondering, okay, well, I have brain problems. I have some of these symptoms that we talked about today. Mm. You can read this book. This will have lots of different techniques and different things that you can do to help slow the process down of brain degeneration. Okay. You know, if you end up having symptoms of dementia or Alzheimer's, you can't cure that stuff. That's just going to get worse. But what you can do is slow it down. There's lots of things that you can do to help improve those symptoms and help uh, improve the plasticity of the brain. And this book does a great job. This is one of my I good friends, uh, Datis Karazian. And, and that will, you know, it's a good read to, to have. So, that. Dr. Red, I'm just thinking to myself now before we wrap it up, I need to exercise, eat less sugar, cut out the wheat, eat more turmeric, and eat... Increase your vitamin I know, D. And I can't read. And, and you're rocking and rolling. <laughs> and I'm rocking and rolling. <laughs> I'll have a healthy brain until I'm 95. Yeah, absolutely. Perfect. Thank you for joining me. I hope your brains are in tip-top shape. For more information about this show and to read about all the items that Dr. Red just talked about, please visit our website at theyoungeryou.tv and I'll see you next week. Next week on The Younger You, we're learning about superfoods. Tune in to find out which foods are super and how you can start incorporating them into your diet. The Younger You set provided by Madison McCord Interiors.